The last subject in mechanics that we're going to learn is, it's very nice, it's nice that it is simple, it is simple harmonic <laughs> it's simple, it's simple harmonic Here we go, hope it doesn't make it simple. So, let's just take a simple example. Let's have a mass spring system. We'll have no friction on the surface between the mass spring system. And we'll take this mass, we'll um, displace it to the right, and then we will let go. The object is clearly going to slide back and forth in what we call simple harmonic motion. The basic concept with simple harmonic motion is that the acceleration is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position. Have I used this symbol before? Yeah. Proportional? <laughs> so the acceleration is proportional to delta x fishy. Alpha uh, means proportional to as well. So the acceleration is proportional to the displacement um, and opposite to uh, opposite the displacement from the equilibrium position. So if we look at the forces acting on this mass at this particular location, the force of gravity is straight down, the force normal is up, and the force of the spring is to the left. The force of the spring, I can't remember if we have defined the force of a spring in this class. Have we defined it yet? We've do, we did it last year, I just can't remember whether we've done it yet this year. The force of the spring is equal to negative kx, where k is, of course, the spring constant. The dimensions on the spring constant, which you tell, are, that is incorrect there. It would be a coefficient if there were none. Gary, help me out. Seconds. <laughs> that would be momentum or impulse. No. Dorf's there? Newtons per meter, if you just solve for k, you get force the spring divided by x, which is going to be newtons per meter. The spring constant is generally newtons per meter. If we look at this and we sum the forces, again, there are, is no friction. We sum the forces in the x direction. We get the negative of the force due to the spring equals mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Now, what does the negative in this force due to the spring equation mean? Ms. Winter. It's just, it's again, just to show the direction. It's to show that the force of the spring is opposite the direction of the displacement. The force, the, the displacement is to the right, therefore the force of the spring is to the left. That's all that means. So once you've drawn the free body diagram, you have included that direction, so you do not need to include that negative. So we have negative kx is equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction. In other words, the acceleration in the x direction is equal to negative k over m times x. So notice, we said that in simple harmonic motion, the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and is opposite the direction of the displacement from the equilibrium position. So here we have the acceleration is opposite the direction of the displacement, and you can see it is also proportional to, and the, proportional, it, the proportionality is given right here by k over m. So you can see that the maximum acceleration is going to be, um, well, it's going to vary from, we'll do the, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, the maximum acceleration is going to be the absolute value of km times the A for the amplitude. Remind me, what is the amplitude, Padre Uh, the, like the, I don't remember. Try. All right. I'm thinking like the distance, like if you have like a graph, like the like distance to the top of the curve. The crest, if you will, if we're talking about a graph, right? Um, we're not specifically talking about a graph here, but it relates to exactly what you were saying. So in this particular case, it's not 
the um, amplitude is not the crest, perhaps, or per se, but in this particular case, Zach, it is close. We need one more word. Um, so the maximum. It's just the maximum distance from the equilibrium position. So the amplitude is the maximum distance from the equilibrium position. So then the maximum acceleration is going to be at that maximum location or at the amplitude. So our acceleration maximum is going to be k over m times k. Uh, let's see. Instantaneous acceleration. What is the equation for instantaneous acceleration? Mohit? Um, dv over dt. The derivative of the velocity as a function of time. OK. What is the equation for instantaneous velocity? Move it again. Uh, dx over dt. Dx over dt. In other words, acceleration is the second derivative of position as a function of time. In other words, this, the second derivative of position as a function of time, is equal to negative k over m times x. Now, we are going to let k over m be equal to omega, where omega is called the angular frequency. In other words, the second derivative of position as a function of time is equal to negative omega times x. Now, technically, it's actually omega squared, which is going to be equal to k over m. In other words, this is omega squared in the middle, the angular frequency squared. This right here is the condition for simple line motion. The second derivative position as a function of time is equal to the negative of the angular frequency squared times x. Yes? Why is the omega squared? Uh, it's just the definition of the um, angular frequency. You'll see as we go through exactly where it fits in. Give it a little bit of time here. Yes, I do understand. Now, please realize that this equation is not on your equation sheet. This is one of the few equations that I do suggest that you memorize. You are going to need to prove that things are in simple harmonic motion. And we have actually proven here that a mass spring system is in simple harmonic motion with an angular frequency of uh, the square root of k over m in this particular case. So if you'll notice, in this particular case, for a mass spring system, the angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m. Now, the angular frequency and the angular velocity. Yes. Um, so can we just like write it down, or do you can we just like write what down? Uh, right. So this equation right here is one that you can just write down because this is a memorized equation. This is the condition for simple harmonic motion. So we know angular velocity and angular frequency are pretty much the same thing. So that the angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m. The equation for angular velocity is what? Look. Angular velocity. Oh, the change in the over time. The change in angular position is a function of time or delta theta over delta t. If the time is the period, what is the change in theta? T? Two pi. Two pi. In other words, the square root of k over m is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. Rearranged, the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. The period of a mass spring system. Last year, we just said the period of a mass spring system is 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Here, we actually go through and derive the equation for the period of a mass spring system. Oh, just real quick, what, uh, how are the frequency and the period related? We do need to understand that, Sarah Jane. Uh, 
frequency is one over the period? The, they are inverses of one another. So the period equals one over the frequency, and the frequency equals one over the period. So you do need to be able to go back and forth, but understand one is just the inverse of the other. Now, the condition for a simple harmonic motion, as I said, is the second derivative position as a function of time is equal to negative omega squared times x. There are equations that we can use to describe the position as a function of time of something in simple harmonic motion. And here is one of them. The position as a function of time is equal to a times a cosine of omega t plus b. This satisfies simple harmonic motion. So this is the definition of simple harmonic motion. And this is the description of something in simple harmonic motion. And I will show how this fits this. First, uh, let's, I guess I'll walk through these first. We've already talked about the amplitude, which is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. We've talked about the angular frequency, which we have already known, we've already let equal to omega squared in our equation here. And um, phi here, the phase constant. Uh, let's see, how do I want to describe that? So phase constant, this is just the phase shift For example, if you have um, an equation for y equals cosine theta, that would look like this, where you have a graph that looks like this, where this location is pi over 2, this location is pi, this is um, 3 pi over 2, and this is 2 pi. If instead we were to graph y equals cosine of theta plus pi over 2, this graph would simply be phase shifted. It would instead look like this, where this location is negative pi over 2. This location is pi over 2. So this phase constant here just has to do with the um, phase angle or the shift of the uh, position. So velocity as a function of time. All we need to do is take the derivative of position, bless you, as a function of time. So please take the derivative a cosine omega t plus phi. Catherine. Um, a omega squared plus phi squared. Ah, let's go one at a time. Let's just start with a. What's the derivative of cosine? That's negative sine. Okay, so we'll put negative sine. Uh, omega t plus phi. Okay, so so far you've taken the derivative of cosine of the quantity omega t plus phi. Times the um, derivative of that which is in the parentheses here. So what we end up with is the velocity as a function of time is equal to negative a omega sine omega t plus phi. Acceleration as a function of time is the derivative of velocity as a function of time. So we can now take the derivative of the velocity as a function of time. Nick? Let me, let's do it one at a time so we don't confuse things. So times the sine, uh, the derivative of this. So cosine omega t plus b times omega. Again, times the derivative of what's inside. So we get the acceleration as a function of time is equal to negative a omega squared times the cosine of omega t plus b. Or, if you prefer, the acceleration as a function of time is equal to, uh, let's see, we'll do negative omega squared multiplied by a times cosine of omega t plus phi. What is a cosine of omega t plus phi? Tyler? X of t. The acceleration as a function of time is equal to negative omega squared times x. So if you recall, what I said is this equation right here is one that satisfies simple harmonic motion. You can use this to describe something in simple harmonic motion. You can also use sine. doesn't really matter. Uh, usually we end up using cosine, but there are instances where you might end up using sine. We'll learn more about that as we get farther into this class. So notice this is the second derivative of position as a function of time is equal to negative omega squared times x. 
you are lucky. I don't know why, but from last year to this year, they decided to add this equation to your equation sheet. It was not on there before, but it's there this year. Congratulations. But again, this condition, the second derivative position of function time is equal to negative omega squared times x is not on there. All right. Uh, let's do let's do one other little thing, which I'm going to pull out of here. <clears throat> what is the maximum velocity looking at this equation where the velocity as a function of time is equal to negative a omega times the sine of the quantity omega t plus phi. What then is the maximum velocity? Jenkins. Negative a omega. Negative a omega. Notice that, well actually technically it's going to be a omega because the sine omega t then is going to be equal to negative one, right? We're going to talk about maximum. Remember, the sine of any angle is going to vary between negative 1 and 1, so the maximum value we can get is when the sine of omega t plus v is equal to negative 1. It gives us a maximum value for the velocity of a times omega. What then is our acceleration maximum equal to omega? Again, just look at what values you could have for cosine of any a. Uh, but remember, just that you're, you're, looking, you're getting confused by the whole omega t plus phi, which is not necessary right now. What is the, help them out here, what's the maximum value we can get for the acceleration powder element? Just a omega squared. Just a omega squared, right? Because the cosine of any angle, the, the maximum we can get is 1, the minimum is negative 1. So the maximum value is going to be when the cosine of this is equal to negative 1. So we get a times omega squared. It's the maximum value for uh, something in simple harmonic motion. Oh, uh, the phase angle, it's important to realize that you need to use radians for that. Uh, omega as well needs to be in radians per second so that we can end up with radians in there, cosine of 